Hey guys, it's Dorian. Today I'm going to have a look at Sabayon Linux. The word itself, it is a, an Italian custard-like dessert, and that's what it's named after. And their logo is a chicken foot because the dessert is egg-based. But anyways, Sabayon Linux. It is a Gen 2 based rolling release distribution, which has been around since 2005. So if you go onto their website, they have a, uh, you can see what I'm gonna be doing next. I looked at their website and uh, I was worried because they're Italian based, I was worried that their wiki and their forums would be in Italian, but that's not the case. So definitely nice to see their forum looks moderately active. It's quite a lot of posts and topics. So if you need help, if you want to um, chat with other users, definitely a good thing here. So if you go click on the download link, you've got desktop server cloud. We of course want desktop. You can see all the different flavors that it comes in. So again, only 64 bit. So your system requirements will come down to what your which version you're downloading. So obviously XFCE, Mate, and Fluxbox will be much lighter on your system than KDE or GNOME. Of course, as always, I downloaded the GNOME version because that's what I use. And I find reviewing the distros using the same desktop environment kind of keep it consistent. So even if you use KDE or something else, it's really just what you're clicking on, how it looks like and the theming, but you get the you get the idea of what the OS is like, anyways. Uh, the ISO for GNOME was 2.2 gigs, so I was really anxious to see what is included in this to make it such a big ISO. So let's just have a look. Wake up. There we go. We went to sleep. Okay, so this is Sabayon. GNOME desktop, you get a nice little welcome screen with the install option right here and your, your, your typical welcome screen. And the install button, of course, launches the installer. Uh, so this 2.2 gigs, yeah, here's the installer, which I'm going to cancel. 2.2 gigs includes a lot of software. Before I get to that, I want to show you the package manager. It wasn't obvious at first looking through here, trying to find the, the software center, because if you don't use Gentoo, you're not gonna jump into the terminal and just start typing stuff. I mean, unless you're being adventurous, but you're not gonna just jump in here and start using Emerge from the command line. That's something that'll come later, of course. If you go to their applications menu, which is a, a nice little menu here, and you go to other, it's called the Rego Application Center, I believe. It's been cut off, but actually the only way I was able to tell that it was a package manager was the icon with the up arrow, which is a common thing for software managers. So here you'll get some stuff at the top, your updates and your notices. I'm going to ignore them for now because that's not important right now. So this is a bit strange at first. This is like a home button. So it'll bring you back to the screen. Hold on, I shouldn't have done that yet. Uh, let me just go here back to the start screen because I'm not sure where to find the start screen. But here, if I ignore this again, you could install other desktops. So right out of the box, as soon as you open it up, you could say, oh, well, I'm gonna install KDE as well. Or you start browsing other things. It's not clear right away. I was a little confused when this first opened how to use it. Uh, this little button here is like a home button. It'll bring you back here. Uh, and then you can go to see the available kernels. You don't have to click run, which I was doing all the time. You can double click, which makes it so much better. And then application groups. So you can go down here to multimedia and you'd find VLC buried in here somewhere. But you can always just up here type 
VLC. And there it is. Install. Give it a try. It's in progress. Show me. It says it's in progress. Okay, well, I'll leave that for now. So, yes, that's the package manager. Maybe it'll work better if it's actually installed in the system, which I will do, but not right away. And let's have a look at the applications again. So the 2.2 gigs, this is what's included. So install to hard drive, which is the installer that I clicked on the welcome screen to begin with. Google Chrome, evolution for your mail, Shotwell, Rhythmbox, LibreOffice, Files. These are your favorites, which you can add and remove. Atom is included. Uh, Atom is a great editor. Uh, calculator, desktop search, which uh, I guess is just for files, images, file search, I suppose. Um, you know what? This doesn't seem to be doing anything, so I'm going to interrupt it. I'm just going to close it. Are you sure? Yes and close this. Okay, so, and then files is Nautilus, or files, which is standard with uh, GNOME, files 3.20.3. And what else do we have here? Gnote, another search for files. Okay, I don't know why there's two. Uh, Text editor, which is get it. Education, LibreOffice, it comes with GIMP. Uh, comes with a full LibreOffice, it looks like. Uh, you have the empathy, chat, hex chat for IRC, transmission for your torrents, VNC viewer, which you don't see too often included, so that's pretty cool. Yes, cat. Uh, in Office. Contacts, Dictionary, Full LibreOffice Suite, Programming, you've got Adam and Glade. Glade you don't see too often either included, which is a GTK uh, editor to make your own GUIs for programming. So that's kind of neat to see there. These open links to their sites. This is actually the first thing that I clicked on. If you go to Sabayon, I saw Sabayon packages and I was like, Sweet, that's the package manager, but it just brings you to their website. So these are all useful links for Sabayon. Sound and video, you got the Bracero CD burner, cheese webcam, uh, MPV for your video players. PDV, I'm actually not even too familiar with this. Uh, this is a video editor. Okay, so probably similar to KDN Live. I haven't actually used it. I might have to check that out. Uh, your Pulse Audio Volume, Rhythm Box, and your GNOME videos. And then under your Sundry, your Config Editor, which you don't see often either. Uh, iBus Preferences, Main Menu, Power Statistics, System Tools. G parted, Magneto updates, printers, your greeter that shows up at the beginning. Uh, this should be the GNOME, typical GNOME settings. So this looks like it's an older version of GNOME. This is not 3.26 or 3.28 because it has the old style um, control panel. Yeah, so it is GNOME 3.20.2, which is actually quite old, to be honest. I'm surprised that it's not. A little newer. And what else do we have here? Utilities, archive manager, backups, I'm guessing is Deja Dupe. Yes, it is. So your typical GNOME software is included in here as well. Uh, your disk usage, analyzer, disks, uh, events, font viewer, password, screenshot, system monitor, and tweak tool. So they do include tweak tool, which is nice because a lot of distros don't. They have to go in and add it anyways. So it's nice to be able to go in right off the bat and start playing with your extensions without having to install it first. Um, and then under other, we have a firewall manager, which should be GUFW, GUFW. That's the usual user firewall 
application. I don't know if it's going to load. I don't think it will. I may have to for sure do a part two. Print settings, Qt configuration, Rego, which I already looked at, and search and indexing. So this, I'm not sure I have seen this before in Linux. This might be a common Gen 2 thing, but I'm guessing this has to do with desktop search and search for files. I'm guessing this has to do with those. So you can index the contents and whatnot, similar to what Windows does. Um, not sure if I would ever enable this because to be honest, in Windows, I always disable this because there's no need. I'm not searching my entire hard drive constantly. So unless you have very, 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 very large file collection of documents that you spend way too much time searching for, you don't really need that. Uh, and also included, stay there, the NVIDIA X server settings, which I am not running Xvidia driver because this is a virtual machine. So this I find interesting that it's included right out of the box, but that makes sense as to why, along with everything else, why the ISO is 2.2 gigs. Now I'm going to be installing this on hardware. I might do a virtual machine first, but I will in the end be putting this on hardware because I'm curious to see how much hard drive space it takes up on an actual hard drive when it is installed. So do I want to quit? Yes. So I'm going to actually do that. And then maybe some more of these applications will start up. And so let's do the install to hard drive. So <clears throat> I think that it has a lot of software, which is good. That's one of their selling points. Gen 2 isn't always user-friendly to install. Uh, I know because I've had issues even just running it on a virtual machine and I kind of just skipped Gen 2. I was going to review it. It was on my list. At the time when I was playing with it, I was like, you know, I, I'm skipping this altogether. It, I think it was around the time of the kernel spectrum meltdown patches where virtual machines were acting up and all that stuff. So it's possible that it might work now, so I'm gonna give it another shot. But Sabion's big selling point is it works out of the box and comes with a lot of useful software and you should be able to just install it, start using it and not have to install anything. So I definitely do give it that. It's definitely good in that regard. So I'm going to give this a shot installing. So I'm gonna start the installation on a virtual machine and see how it works. So it just finished installing on the virtual machine and I'm going to check it out, make sure the package manager works and I can install things. And then I'm gonna actually install it on hardware. And I'm curious to see if the NVIDIA driver is gonna work out of the box because I have an NVIDIA Optimus card, which can be finicky sometimes. So don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and check me out on part two of Sabion for the hardware portion and make sure the package manager works and all that. And you can also follow me over on Twitter at Dorian.slash. Till next time, guys, bash on.